All right, cool. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Hayana, product designer on the release team. And uh, today I'm going to share with you um, some of the usability test, test findings uh, from our detached pipeline or merge request pipeline investigation. And uh, also um, what we learn from what users think and also how they use the product. And um, some clarifications that we got from them during this process. Um, so yeah, quickly intro. I think like last week, uh, Mike also presented uh, some deliverables for the progressive delivery group. So we both share responsibility uh, on progressive delivery and release management. Um, on progressive delivery, our top priorities are really on speed and automation. And our vision is to help teams accelerate the delivery. Um, so yeah, so this feature specifically falls on the continuous delivery, uh, which currently is complete, and our next maturity level um, is lovable. So that's super cool. So before I start, some background story, right? Everything starts with the merge request, and with this feature, it wasn't so different. Um, in 11.9, 11.8, 11.9, we introduced um, merge request pipelines and we introduced this new uh, concept of a detached pipeline. Um, different from attached pipelines that run on the merge ref, um, these ones, uh, it's quite complex. It, this is the current definition. Um, they occur when there are no merge requests and or where a merge request is work in progress uh, and if there is no configuration in your C GitLab uh, CIMO file. So when this configuration is done, um, the users will see in their pipelines view a detached label and also in the jobs view to indicate that this pipeline is different, right? That runs in the context of a merge request. So this was 11.9 and once we introduced this change, and now uh, if you're familiar, if you've seen the pipelines in GitLab on www.gitlab uh, project, you see there are a lot of detached pipelines. Uh, and once this was uh, out there, we got a lot of feedback internally. So I could not find all the, the comments, but in Slack, people were really confused about what detached pipelines were, uh, how to use them. And they were really uh, thinking that mostly that the detached pipelines that we had in, in, on GitLab were the same as Git detached heads, which is something completely different. Um, and that was causing a lot, a lot of frustration internally. And, but my favorite comment, of course, is this one by Balu that everyone is confused about it. No one really understood this feature. Um, so low hanging fruits, quick wings. Um, we thought of, okay, let's improve then something around this label. Let's add uh, a tooltip, right? Something informative to say, okay, this pipeline is detached because. Um, but this was really a small, uh, uh, like quick wing, uh, low hanging fruit solution um, to drive awareness to the label, but it doesn't really, it didn't really tell us why people were not understanding this problem. Uh, it didn't fix it. It was just, I don't know, a tooltip. And then we started the investigation uh, to see out of, you know, with these things in context and out of context with the, with the merge request, uh, what, why are people so confused about it? And especially once we release merge trains and we have pipelines for merge requests, pipelines for merge results, um, there was a lot more confusion. I'm not going to go into details, but pretty much people had no idea. So to start with the understanding, I quickly ran a usability hub questionnaire internally and we got 15 replies, I think in, in a day or less. Um, and yes, our assumptions were right. People were really confused about it. Only one out of 15 uh, participants uh, have used detached pipeline before. Those are all GitLab. Uh, uh, um, internal customers, so GitLabers, um, or they have never seen it, or they didn't know what to do with it. And when we ask uh, what do they what do they understand about it, they had very different um, different answers. So some of them say that it runs in a different project, that users cannot view the pipeline, or you know it's a detached head, and that's really bad for your project. So then um, we jump to the usability testing. So with um, amazing help from Lori, uh, we put together a um, uh, discussion guide and we walked over the business decisions. So we wanted to make the best approach to inform users 
when to use pipeline for merge requests or detach pipelines in this case. And our goals were to understand why they, the users think this label is confusing, uh, learn what they don't understand about it, not only about the label per se, but um, what can we improve in our documentation and uh, learn how they expect to be informed about this type of pipelines. And you can check later uh, the issues and the research epic that has everything documented. So for the second step, we interviewed six participants from all around the world. They were uh, all GitLab users. Um, two of them were again, internal customers, so two GitLabbers. Um, and they all have some experience with pipelines. They, um, if they haven't really used pipelines in their daily jobs, they were you know, familiar with the topic. Uh, and then we started by um, showing them a UI of the label and asking, okay, this thing out of context, what do you understand of it? And then showing them on the pipelines, the merge request, the, the, the pipelines uh, page. Uh, and the second step was to ask them to find information as, and set up pipelines for merge requests in a test project. So that was quite fun. Um, only one user finished the configuration successfully. All the other users were super uh, lost um, with the naming and uh, with where to find information and where the configuration should be in the project. So some of our findings, uh, the main one was around, of course, uh, what they know about this functionality. And what we learned was that uh, users really struggle to understand this feature. Um, and not only that, um, but they were not familiar with the concept, right? It's really the naming, not only on the page, but how we call it on the documentation, how we call it internally. Um, and three participants had the impression that the detached label was related to the Git detach head state. Um, and all of them were really unsure. It was not clear for them why this word was chosen. Why do we go with detach? Uh, because this term is super confusing or you know, it doesn't give enough context. Um, and some people even were even confused and thought that this had some connection with the GitLab runners. It was really, really interesting um, to see them trying to figure out what this label meant. And another thing was that super interesting is that they, in their pipeline views, they really try to read each UI element to kind of guess what the detached pipeline meant. So another finding is that we can improve the clues that we, we add to the interface um, to make easier for users to find the correct information so that they don't have to go to Google and then search for this feature to then come back because um, it generate a lot of frustration. So detach head, it's not the same as detached pipelines on GitLab. So that's the second thing. Um, and the another big finding was around configuring pipelines for merge requests. So the way we do now is that uh, if you go on settings and you configure um, pipelines for merge results, you still need to go to GitLab CI and add some configurations. So uh, some participants expected to do all the configuration in one place, so on settings, or uh, opt out from this configuration, the GitLab CI file, instead of having to go to the file and manually add uh, a line. And, um, and the fact that enable merge requests, uh, pipelines enable merge training was confusing to them. Um, so the most critical part was really that you need to go to two places to see if your configuration is correct. Um, and Yes, it will be super awesome if the GitLab CI file could validate um, when one configuration in the setting is, uh, is selected, if the GitLab CI file has, um, has the correct, uh, correct data. And some small findings, but still super relevant when we ask how they distinguish pipelines that run on merge requests versus on merge results. They were confused, they didn't really know the difference. Um, and there were significant improvements that we could do in our documentations. Uh, right now, there are at least, I think, two or three different pages. So if you go on Google, there's three different results for very similar topics. So it would be nice uh, if we could um, put, bring some of this content together or at least make the right references 
uh, on the docs and also sorting on the pipeline pages. People say that, well, you cannot sort for anything. So how can I even uh, just select my, you know, detached or regular pipelines in my view? Um, but of course, we had positive feedback. Uh, all participants say that they really rely on the GitLab documentation to understand the functionalities and that our docs are awesome, that the team uh, is really open to make improvements and that in general the docs are reliable, that the GitLab CI uh, linting is also super helpful, and in general that GitLab CI is awesome. That was a uh, super great feedback they gave us. Uh, next steps is to suggest improvements, of course, for the naming of this, uh, uh, this label or this type of pipeline. We know that the, the name we use now, it's confusing uh, and makes people think of the Git detached head. So we can simplify there and even think, do we, is it really relevant for people to see that their pipelines are detached or can we use a different UI element on the, the label uh, to do that? Uh, and revisit our docs, as I mentioned, make sure that the documentation is consistent and that things uh, are, are clear for both pipelines for merge results and merge requests. And uh, set the expectation both on the UI and the docs to when a detached pipeline happens and uh, allow users to access information in the UI rather to leave GitLab uh, to find the right information. Um, and improve or simplify the process of configuring this, this feature. Now we do it in two places. So can we standardize this and bring it to one single location? Um, and that's related to the, the previous point, make possible to validate the GitLab CI file once you have something configured in the settings. Uh, because right now what happens is that in your merge request, when you have uh, a GitLab CI, oh, sorry, when you have a, a only merge request, which is the, the line that you need to add to the file, to make use of this, uh, this functionality, um, you don't really know where you have to go and configure. It just says there is an error. So that's a lot of small things that we need to, to connect uh, to improve this functionality. And that's pretty much it. So again, I'd like to thank Laurie. She was super awesome with all the mentoring and help um, throughout this process. And Orit, Nathan, all our engineering team, uh, and Ian also. He's not here today, but he really helped me uh, review this document and also Mike, so everyone that helped me in this process. Yeah, thank you. It was great. <laughs>